Hey everyone, my name is Paul Middleton. I am a husband, a father to two beautiful girls, and also the communications director here at Sun Valley. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you out of the book of First Timothy. And a little bit of context here is actually Paul is writing to his protege, Timothy, um, at a church in Ephesus. And this whole book, this letter, is about how our faith and our belief should lead to practical change in our life, visible change. And here's what it says in, in chapter 5, verse 8. It says, But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for the members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. That's pretty intense. And a lot of the context here is just talking about how the members of the church, us, how we should be shaped our lives should be shaped by the gospel, and this is actually our spiritual responsibility. This kind of life following Jesus can't just be true at your work or in a personal, personal singular way. It has to be true in, in our families and in our relationships. Um, something that challenged me about this is I work in vocational ministry. Literally, I have a job working for a church. Was that my family can't get my scraps. I have two young kids, both of them under the age of four, and they take a lot of energy when I walk through the door, but they can't get my scraps. And so I, I heard on a podcast once and I felt convicted. And so I actually put a reminder in my phone that each and every day at 510, I know I'll be driving home right at that time. It says, remember, you're headed to your main job. My main job, my main job is, is husband to my wife, Andrea. And as father to my girls, Hannah and Rachel, that's my main job. Yes, this is obviously a vocation and it is a paycheck that provides for my family generously through, through, through God. But in that, it's my responsibility to be present and have a life that is shaped by Jesus in my home. What good is it if, if at work I treat my coworkers well but go home and, and, and relationally terrorize my family? What good is it to, to be able to write a great email or come up with a great plan to share about what cool things are happening in our church, but then my girls grow up not knowing the love of their father? That's just not okay with me. And that's not, that's right here what Paul's talking about. That's not okay. That's not how a believer should, should live. He says it so intensely that this, that people that live this way have denied the faith worse than an unbeliever. So a question that we want to focus on is, is where is our, our finish line where we may be, let's say those of us that work um, in an office, where is your finish line so that you can reset and make sure that you have enough energy to give when you head back to your main job, your, your spouse or if you're a parent, your, your family and your kids. Be encouraged that if, if you're not quite doing this well today, that all of relationships are a process. Just like our, our faith in Jesus isn't just a moment, but it's actually a process of moments. It's a, a process of lifetime where God is changing us and working in us and drawing us closer to him. But so are relationships, they're, they're the same. That there may have been a moment that you've missed or that maybe you didn't quite do what you wanted to do, but each and every day is a new day. Every seven days is a new week. Every month is a new month. And you have a new chance to take that step today and actually make sure that your life and that your faith at home, in your home, is shaped by the way of Jesus as well. I think we should ask ourselves, how do we allow the character of Jesus to be the character of our family, the character of our, our closest relationships. If you're single or dating or you're, you're maybe living with a roommate, how is your relationship with your roommate inside the household that you're currently in, how is it shaped to be looking like and formed like the character of Jesus? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, those fruits that come from the Holy Spirit working in and through us. There's this beautiful quote by uh, the author and pastor Paul David Tripp. He says it this way, it's from his book on marriage. Um, 
but I think this could apply to all areas of life, relationships, parenting, you name it. He says, love is being willing to have your life complicated by the needs and struggles of your husband or wife or young kids, my interpretation, without impatience or anger. One of the most important calls of love is to find greater joy in meeting the need of another than getting your own way. I pray that today, as you are inconvenienced by the needs of others, you find greater joy in serving and loving them, being shaped in the character of Jesus to love those closest to you, your neighbors, maybe with inside your own household, so that we can live a life that follows the way of Jesus. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Spirit, we were made for your presence, so to, may today be a day that's filled with you in all that we do, in every relationship that we have, every opportunity that we encounter. Let us remember what our main jobs are, what our main responsibilities are, and whom they are to. Um, continue to work inside of us. Help us, God, have the wisdom to know the right thing to do and the courage to do it. We pray all of this in your name through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day.